Fulford. He was the former Asian bureau chief of Forbes magazine. He's also written for the South uh, China Morning Post and a variety of other high-profile publications. We're going to talk to him about global affairs today. How are you, Benjamin? Fine, fine. How are you? I am very, very good. So right into it, I, I want to get what the uh, Japanese people's take is on this Russia-Georgia situation. I mean, people are really in this country still believe that, you know, Russia is the demon and they attack Georgia mercilessly and, you know, the bear is back. But we know that uh, U.S. Special Forces were in Georgia. There was a sneak attack on South Ossetia, which really amounted to an attempt to uh, ethnically cleanse the region, and Russia was just reacting. Well, I mean, you know, the situation in Japan is a bit similar to the U.S., where you have a large brainwashed public that just believes what their media is telling them, uh, and you have a significant group of people who know the truth. And the people who know the truth know that this was an American provocation, but more specifically, they know that what's happening is we're dealing with a very, very dangerous situation where we have a group of neo-Nazis who control the U.S. who are in deep trouble, and they are trying to dig themselves out of this trouble by starting World War III, or trying to. And so the government and the elite people are aware that these people are cornered, they're dangerous, and they're trying to somehow create a provocation to start World War III and give them an excuse to impose martial law in the U.S. Well, that seems to be what it's coming down to. I really hope that they do not achieve their goals. It seems like there might be a de-escalation there. But what you're telling me is that the general population over there also thinks that Russia is the aggressor in this situation and are really just not aware of what's going on. Well, I think the aware segment is larger than in the U.S., but uh, unfortunately the mainstream newspapers and television are following the U.S. line right now. I mean, in terms of the, the, major, you know, the, the, the major media. Well, I mean, you've had uh, Fujita over there who has, you know, gone before his uh, par parliament and basically brought up 9-11 truth. I was wondering what the situation is with that. Has that progressed any? I mean, obviously, the World Trade Center uh, 7 NIST report came out yesterday. Of course, they said it was fire, uh, even though it was hundreds of degrees less than they had previously thought, and they said that the damage to the building didn't really matter, and it was only one beam that detached after thermal expansion, but this caused a perfect symmetrical collapse. Oh, I mean, look, you know... The people who are totally brainwashed will will clutch any straw they need to, you know, keep their illusionary world around them, right? Mm -hmm. But anybody who knows what's going on knows and has known for a long time this is a bunch of BS. So do you think there will be any progress over there uh, on the uh, issue of 9-11 uh, Truth? Well, yeah, what's happening here over here is that we have a government that was set up by the CIA and the you know, remnants of the uh, military regime of, of World War II, and that regime is coming to an end. They're they're delaying. They can delay the next election until September of next year, but all opinion polls show that they are on their way out. So what's happening is. We're headed for a major regime change here in Japan. And so the opposition party that, that has supported the majority of the population, they are aware of the situation, and there will be truth commissions and all that sort of stuff once this regime is out of the way. Well, what kind of power do you think will be given to those kind of commissions? I mean, obviously we won't have a, a war crimes tribunal much like The Hague. I mean, I just don't see that happening. I mean, what oh, do you there will think? be a truth commission like they had in South Africa. Mm-hmm. So now, basically people will be named, but nothing will be done? Well, you know, they'll be named and, and shamed, and, and when you say nothing will be done, I mean, you have to look at it this way. I mean, they won't be able to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. now, here in Japan, the, the same people who were behind 911 have been financing certain uh, pseudo-right-wing groups who function much like the German brown shirts did. Mm-hmm. And they've been murdering politicians and um, members of the media, as well as industrialists, in order to keep their sort of control over this country for the past 60 years. And that will be exposed. 
Well, I certainly hope so, because we've only seen more censorship. I mean, in the last few weeks, uh, InfoWars and Prison Planet have been uh, blocked in large segments of the United Kingdom. Alex actually did a big contest to uh, make viral videos to make people aware of this. And, you know, I see that crackdown happening in this country a little bit soon. I, I don't know what it's like over in Japan. How censored is the Internet right now? Well, not very. I mean, uh, the, the the current regime is sort of like reluctantly following U.S. orders to the minimum necessary uh, with the greatest delay possible. Um, that's sort of their policy. They, they try to appear like they're following their their official line without really wanting to do it as you know, that's what's happening here. Um, you got to remember, the U.S. is sort of like the heart of darkness. Uh, things look worse from the worse to, from the point of view of within the United States. Now, I didn't know today was not going to uh, Alex Jones was not going to be here, but there was an issue I wanted to bring up with him because I feel that he has been manipulated by CIA propaganda. When it comes to China, well, how so? You have the in floor? particular. I want to discuss Falun Gong. Okay, Falun Gong is not a typical religious organization. Okay, it's mm -hmm. a psyops, a very big one, and it's run by a guy called Elliot Abrams, who is a convicted criminal in the Iran Contra affair. And you can prove that. Uh, Falun Gong is a psyops just by looking at their financing. Look at their bi monthly uh, called Epoch Times and see who publishes it and why it's published in seven languages. Mm -hmm. And then you have Sound of Hope, it's a radio that they broadcast, which is helped by the Broadcasting Board of Governors. These are the same people as behind uh, Voice of America, Radio Sawa, Radio Markey. In other words, it's uh, it's a CIA front mm -hmm. and put in place by Elliot Abrams. And then we have a television thing called New Tang Dynasty. And again, it's also CIA financed. So whenever Alec Jones says, you know, they are, the, the Chinese are a fascist regime and the U.S. is headed for the same path, he is unwittingly, you know, spreading CIA propaganda. Well, I mean... I certainly don't want to be more like China. I feel like, you know, China is somewhat of a police state. The military and the police are one and the same. I mean, have I Have you been to China? I, I have not been to China. I, I well, that's why you don't understand. <laughs> you go to China, okay, mm -hmm. and hang out in the street with the Chinese and see what it's like to live there, mm -hmm. and then talk about it, okay? The fact is that when it comes to the average Chinese now, they are freer than the average American. Now, it is true they don't have this big parade and this big fake show called democracy as done in the U.S., but you're, you're aware enough now that it's a totally rigged uh, BS show in the U.S., right? I mean, Oh, absolutely, but I just think that there has to be some kind of a separation between the military and police, and once you lose that, I mean, you get into dangerous territories. I mean, they openly sell dissidents' organs on the on the open market in China. Okay, the thing about this whole, for, for example, Falun Gong dissidents' organs thing, mm -hmm. okay, uh, that has been proven to be false, okay? There was a, a U.S. CIA fake story about that, and the Chinese invited the international media to visit the hospitals where this was supposed to be taking place and whatever. Mm -hmm. It is true that for a while they were selling the organs of condemned criminals, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this became a source of major criticism, and they put an end to it, okay? But the idea that they're taking Falun Gong people and, and just selling their organs and organs and torturing them, that has been proven to be false. Well, I'll have um, to look into it. I mean, uh, I'm looking at the Epoch Times right now. They're talking yeah. about organ harvesting China's labor yeah, camp. Yeah, Epoch Times, saying, again, I mean, and you're saying you're that that is a CIA paper, of course you're going to read shit like that. I mean, and stuff like that. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, well, you know, again, I, I, I'm, I don't know enough about it, and you kind of put me on the spot here for that, so I'll have to look into it. i got to tell you, I, I can't see myself comfortable in a more Eastern eye society. I see, I, I see both cultures kind of gravitating towards one another, which scares me. I mean, in the last well, 20 to 30 years, I mean, we're talking about blue jeans, Coca-Cola over there, obviously, 
a lot of, uh, you know, westernized eateries or whatever. And over here, I see more of a police state. And I, I'm sorry, I just don't know if I would be comfortable with, again, the military being the police, especially the way the military is set up in this country. I, I think that's a, a very thin line. And I know that China has kind of been endeared over the past 10 years being uh, beginning to be accepted in global organizations, you know, NATO, the UN, and now, you know, hosting the Olympics. So, you know, obviously my beef is not with every Chinese citizen, and I truly don't know how much freedom uh, a Chinese citizen has on the street, but I do know that they do have a lot of one-child policy.